What's a red flag when looking for a job? If the job description has about 20 items, of which one is sales your job is going to be sales. If the job description has multiple items, then the majority of your duty is going to be the worst one of those items. A bit like occasional weekend means occasional weekend off. Earning potential is stressed over current salary. In 5 years you can be making X. Cool. Add that to my offer as guaranteed, and we have a deal. Well it's not guaranteed. Oh gotcha. So what you're saying, is that statement holds no value. You know, while you're working here, there's an opportunity to work hundreds of millions of dollars, if you play the lottery. Master's degree preferred for an entry level job. Starting salary. 30k 40k. That's generous compared to the listings I've seen. Normally they go like this R&D chemical engineer needed. Must have at least 5 years experience in developing industrial production processes. Master's degree required. Part time. 39 hours a week. Pay 10.50 an hour. Must be hired through a temp agency so we don't have to commit to you. Making jokes about overtime and crunch time. Guaranteed it's going to be a nights and weekends are optional, but not actually optional, place. I went to an interview, where the guy said we don't end the day, until everyone is done and sometimes that takes another hour on a busy day. Then my genius brain said yay I don't want to work constant overtime. What was I thinking expecting to go home, when my contract says I go home in reality maybe an hour overtime can easily turn into 2 hours overtime every day having to pretend this is normal is toxic af. When I was a GM for Chipotle I would constantly work 12 plus hour days, salary, and one busy weekend I worked 15 hours on Friday and 15 on Saturday, and on Sunday I decided to go to the gas station and eat my donuts in my car and just listen to the radio for like 10 extra minutes to just kind of unwind. You better believe the area manager was there the next day with a write up in hand, because I was 10 minutes late on Sunday, but when I asked what about the other 10 extra hours I put into my store the previous days. That's just part of the job description. Initially unpaid, but will result in full time offer upon completion of ZIS. This will be an excellent chance to expand your portfolio and gain lots of exposure with leading global brands. Graphic designer here. My favorite response to this. You can die from exposure. High staff turnover. In a job interview I asked how long do people in this position stay. The manager danced around the question and didn't give me an exact answer. He just told me, I don't know. People come and go. They found other jobs and leave me hanging. That is sign of a place with high turnover. That answer made me take a hard pass on the job. The and leave me hanging also seems pretty unprofessional. Already casting the blame onto previous workers when you'd think someone in his position would want to stay as impartial as possible, no matter what they actually believed. We work hard and play hard, it actually means all work, and for sure no play. Translation, you will work 60 plus hours a week, and are expected to come to the company happy hour, whether you drink or not. Also we all stay here too much then go get hammered, because we hate our spouses and children, and will do anything to avoid going home. Hiring lots of people on the same position, everyone who calls gets a job. Often means the job is either bullcrap, or they're setting you all up, to compete for the actual job. I had this once. Turned out it was commission only, door to door vacuum sales. I did that for a month. My breaking point was, when I was told I couldn't carry any water with me in what is essentially desert climate in middle of summer. Was told to request a glass of water from random strangers. Same if I needed to use the bathroom. I wound up so parched I was risking real dehydration and the other salespeople had the nerve to drink all my water. Oh, and I sold a grand total of 3 vacuums. I actually has 5 sales. But I quit on a Friday, and by Monday they claimed my last 2 sales were cancelled, and I now owed them something like $150 for accessories. Convinced them to zero out my entire account and just close it. That can't be legal specifically limiting somebody's access to water. When they crap talk previous employees, they're going to do it to you. Same goes for them insulting current employees behind their back. I saw that during my orientation. Two supervisors were loudly talking about how useless an employee was after they got off the phone with him. 
Even if it's true, the fact that they don't care who hears them is a sign of a toxic work environment. Typical behavior of managers who like to deflect blame for their own mistakes onto employees. Basically a symptom of a terrible boss. Always ask them why the person you are replacing left the job. The way they answer this could be a red flag. I always ask how is performance measured, and what's the next step slash when, will I hear back, and any other question that may have come up during the interview. But I like this question, I'm going to add it to my interview question list. Depending on the truthfulness of the answer, this could have saved me from a job a few years back. I have started asking what does success look like in this role, and what goals or issues was this role created to address. The second one is less common, but I do client services slash sales support and sometimes having a full time person for that is new to them. We are a family here which means this is how they try to make up for the crappy pay and long hours. This is the one I was looking for. Yes it's a family in the sense that the company expects me to be willing to do anything to help you and your company anytime, anywhere, anyhow. You and your brothers and sisters Zaka the other overworked unappreciated peons are conditioned to work harder to help each other out. The problem there is that the only people who benefit are the people at the top. It's essentially a predatory practice designed to force extra effort out of you by abusing your empathy and your connection to your coworkers. Johnny McCorporate a frick bag literally wouldn't flinch if you dropped dead at your desk from the stress. He would just be mad at the loss of output and immediately be concerned with finding a new cog for the machine he calls a family. Thank you. A million times this. This is the unadulterated truth about the corporate world. They do not care about you. There is no team. There is no family, as they sell it. It's bullcrap. They are 100% out for themselves and everything you do is for the purpose of making them richer and gaining them more power. If it's not you doing it, it'll be somebody else. So, playing on your empathy and sense of duty is a very effective way to make you produce more, dance to their tune, and contribute to the giant bullcrap facade that they want to portray. It's not about benefiting anyone but themselves, and it's certainly not about family. I got a call from a subway I applied to telling me my interview was in 10 minutes. That was the first I heard from them after submitting my application. When I was in college I had applied online for a job at SpaceX and they randomly called me like 2 months later asking if I had time to talk about my resume right then and there. I hadn't even looked at my resume for the past 2 months and frankly I was not prepared for that phone call lol. Same thing happened to me in February. I applied at a big bank here in Toronto for a summer intern position. I interned there the previous summer, and because I knew a recruiter they had my resume in a special pool. Anyways, while I was grocery shopping, roughly 2pm, I get a call from a manager asking me if I'm interested in a coupe for the summer, and that she got my resume. She then starts asking me about my experiences with databases and stuff, so in like, can I call you back at a later time? I'm in the middle of grocery shopping right now. She said no, because she needed to submit a candidate list two hours in half an hour. So I wasn't sure whether this was the interview or she was just screening, but I went along with it. At this bank, or any, usually the manager lets ours know who they want to interview, and then ours takes cares of bookings and communication to the applicant. So something like this is definitely not normal. I thought it was just a screening. So W point E, we talked for 7 minutes. I then get an email 2 hours later from this manager, saying that she had decided to go with another candidate, and so I was hella confused and mad. Felt unfair and unprofessional. I definitely dodge a bullet not working for this person though. A former coworker shared this tidbit with me years ago and it works wonders. Try to schedule your in-person interview as late in the afternoon as possible, relevant to your position. If you're expecting a 9-5 job, schedule your interview for 4 o'clock or 4.30. You probably discussed after hours work etc during the interview. When you are done, you should be able to look around are people still working? Is the parking lot empty? You can match up the evidence with what was claimed during the interview and from that, judge how realistic the entire job description is based on how they treated the after hours work. Just make sure they're ice and a staggered schedule or multiple shifts. Most of my positions are listed from 8, 430 but about half. 
the office works 6, 230 or 9, 530. Then since most of my salary guys want to climb the ladder and appear busy they stick around for 15, 20 minutes to leave after their bosses. Or the SDEs just come into work at 10.30am and end at 730pm. Because they can lol. This was a red flag I had during an interview process once. I was doing a phone interview for an IP position and the person I was interviewing with basically changed the details of the job during the interview. Instead of the first shift hours a position promised, he immediately went into saying it would be 6 plus months before the opportunity for first shift would even be a possibility. Also, he was begin to asking how dedicated I was to jobs. The idea of weekend shifts, again, not in the original description, kept coming up, and how everyone had to be a team player and help out on weekends when needed. The kicker was when he started talking about how many hours he worked. He was bragging that he was up at 6am every day working, then he'd go into the office for the day, come home to see his family for dinner, and get right back to work until 10-11pm every night. I had never been turned off from a job faster in my life. He asked me to think things over, and he'd send me some paperwork via email. Needless to say, I called him the next morning and declined the job. It was the worst interview process I'd ever been in. I'm in it as well. Some of the interviews I had before landing my current job were very similar. Had one interview where the manager belittled one of the techs just before he walked into the room. Probably didn't realize the door was open lol. I'm really lucky though since my current position is awesome. I work with some really friendly people. It's a small company and that's what I prefer. I just got a job in a small friendly company too. The gave me the whole we are a family line in the interview, which normally makes me throw up in my mouth a little, but it came across as genuine for once. I took the role on gut feel and it's great. People listen to me, it's too small a company to ignore anyone. People are valued as individuals, rather than being expected to fit a standard employee template, which in it tends to be young, quiet and bearded, none of which I am. And they are appreciative when you get things done, rather than nitpicking as an excuse not to reward you. The latter is especially annoying when you don't care about money or promotion, but just want a bit of respect. Couple of things. Open interviews. Admittedly I've fallen for this a few times, but I was young and stupid. It's clear they have a high turnover, so they are trying to secure as many people as they can. Most of the time these open interview jobs don't have salaries, just commission, refusal or reluctancy to share details over the phone. This is what usually ends up in you turning up to an open interview. If they withhold information about the role, what you'll be doing etc, that's a huge red flag. They just want to get you in the door for an interview, to pressure you into joining. I've been seeing this a lot. What is an open interview? You're being interviewed with like 10 other people at the same time. If you ask them what the pay is, and they start off with what you could be making after so much time and they start rambling about the raise process, run the other way. During my last interview for an entry level semi skilled press operator position the hour guy says my pay will be like this, if you hit your rate every day, factor in your attendance bonus, then if you go over rate we'll pay you piece rate, they don't, I checked, and if the packing line gets your orders out on time and your quality is high enough, and we don't get docked with any fees, a process over which I'll have no control, after I wrap my pallet, you'll be making $15.20 slash HR or more, if you sign up for Saturdays. But that's not what I asked, I asked what my base pay was going to be to which he replied, 10.61 slash hour. No thank you. I've never heard such a complete pile of rune around. Bullcrap. The more complicated the pay structure, the worse it is. It's fine if there's a normal commission or normal bonus for meeting your personal goal, but when they start adding on qualifiers and a bunch of extras, then it's either a scam to get you hired, or they really just don't care about employees and only care about bottom line, or both. Looking for rock stars in the job description, unless of course the posting is in fact for a position to be a rock star. Similarly, ads that read along the lines of, do you like sports? Come be a part of our team. We are laid back and have fun. We want all of our MVPs to succeed, so we work hard, and we play hard too. 
If they are trying to sell you on the work environment in the ad, most of the time, you should run. I'm sure there are exceptions, but most of the time, you can substitute rock stars and sports and MVPs in all these ads interchangeably, with all of it loosely translating to, we are gonna load a bunch of you up in a van at the, but crack of dawn, to drop in neighborhoods for door to door cold call selling cutlery. Arrived for an interview not too long ago. Showed up 15 minutes early, and had all my certs to prove training. Waited over 20 minutes before the secretary led me to a conference room. Waited another 40 minutes and got fed up. Quality manager walked in as I was getting up to leave. He was very offended when I told him he had wasted my time and I would never accept a position. After being left to wait almost an hour while having an appointment, drove an hour and a half to a job interview once. The interviewer was traveling and I was supposed to meet them in the business center of their hotel. Waited for a little over an hour. Nobody showed or called me. Tried calling them, straight to voice the mail. Got fed up and left 30 minutes into my drive home I got a call back, they wanted to know where I was. Apparently they were in an important meeting that ran long and couldn't call me or email me to let me know. Got calls from them for a month trying to set up an interview despite me telling them I wasn't interested every single time. I once drove 3 hours for an interview for an internship. They got to me right away, and the first question the guy asks is so you're here for our field tech position right? I said no, I applied for the shop internship. He immediately lost interest, and I spent a total of 12 minutes in their building. Job description. You will be in charge of the online marketing. Because of that, we expect that you will also be the web developer, photoshopper, community manager, coffee maker and peen sucker. That kind of crap will tell you if that business understands the role they are looking to fill or are just expecting some kind of magical entity that will do everything online related by himself. Yeah definitely this. Make sure you have a clearly defined job description and not one that is vague enough to have a lot of tact on bullcrap. And even after, don't go blursting out you can also do this, and that unless it's beneficial to you. Any job that requires an upfront cost. This is a telltale sign that you are getting wrapped up into a Ramelin pyramid scheme. No I will not pay for my uniform to work at your pizza place, are you insane? Technically I paid for my uniform at the fast food place I worked at. They simply took it out of my paycheck. I turned down a second interview for a position in which the interviewer said something to the effect of if your boss mls you on a Friday night, you don't have to respond, but you know how that looks. Made it pretty clear that they expect work to be your first priority. It looks like I don't want that job lol. When they say you could be earning 6 figures in less than a year. When the posting lists the salary range as $50,000, $300,000, that means it's an all commission sales job. Also the only way you will see six figures will be to rob a bank on the way home from work. A employer who treats you like they are doing you a favor. With good servant leadership it should be the other way around. An unclear job description or a job description that includes too many duties. Not being offered the opportunity to see the working areas or talk to people who would be your peers. Just generally trying to feel out whether or not they have things under control or not. I don't want to walk into a crap show. This needs more upvotes. An employer that acts like this will also act like doing payroll is an act of charity, not the business agreement that it is. For me when they do open interviews lol. 1000%. I used to manage restaurants, and in my time doing so, I swore I would never put on Ari Adder board anything like, now hiring all shifts, open interview dates, etc. The closest I ever got, was putting up one time, now hiring one great associate. And your point is both for potential employees and consumers, because I'll never willingly go to a restaurant, that says now hiring all shifts. I can only assume the service will be dog crap, if for no other reason than lack of experience. Ha, huh. Oklahoma. Once I stopped at a Chick-fil-A, because I hadn't eaten a chicken sandwich on a long time. In the dining area, one row of tables was reserved for people coming in to fill out interview applications, and at the corner booth two managerial staff were conducting interviews in groups of two applicants at the same time. I thought it was really strange, but this location was right next to a community college, so that's what I chalked it up to. 
requires 10 years experience, 2 master's degrees, start 8.50 hours. You also need to wipe everyone's asses and make tea and coffee. They're unbelievable. They expect way too much from people, especially if the job has only existed for a few years. Why can't we find quality people for this position? It's a huge mystery. I had a team lead interview me for a contract once say bluntly, you don't want to work here, it's horrible. He was right and still undersold the experience somehow, and you still took the job. Come on, man. Temporary 3, 6 month contract. I completed the project and moved on to the next contract. Family owned and operated. The family members will not be held to the same standards as you. At my previous job, it was well known that the easiest way to argue against the owner was to get one of his sons to do it for us, as they could fight without the fear of losing their jobs. In reality, the owner appreciated when people would go against him, but only if you had good arguments. It seems like a few people failed to convince him in the past and the store is stuck around. I interviewed for a company that had a recruiter after me pretty hard. The company was just moving into my market and the reviews on Glassdoor definitely mentioned people being frustrated with the bro culture. All of my interviews were over FaceTime with the managers showing up in their pyjamas from home and admitting that since the company is still growing the workload was pretty much 7 days a week until you got your new team hired and running it just wasn't very professional and it was obvious they didn't have structure or care about people's time. I also don't trust companies that brag about things like nerf gun fights around the office and constant happy hour events. Those perks are fun, but it's clear when that's all they talk about in the job. Posting that they're trying to distract you from other issues. I need to see that your company culture is enriching and creates success, not free lunches. Places who always say they're hiring and always taking applications, but you never actually see anyone new being trained or anything. It means people are quitting constantly and management isn't hiring new people, so they are critically understaffed on top of poorly managed. When looking at compensation figures, bear in mind that up to x includes the number 0. My favorite is up to x or more which means literally nothing. If the job asks for money to begin, we'll hide it this behind. Oh you know we just need $90 for the piss test and $180 for the marketing training. Definitely not talking from my scammed ass's personal experience. This is my number one red flag. I've actually never seen this flag on a legit business before. You have to buy a kit. Scam. You need to pay the company or one that they are contracted to for training first. Scam. Need to buy job supplies? Still a scam. Any legit business is forced to compensate you. If you have to buy any product or service to start making money it is a pyramid scheme slash MLM. Multi-level marketing that has a 1% chance at best of making you pennies per hour if you continue the chain by defrauding others. If you're the kind of person who likes a 9-5 job this may not be right for you. That's perfect. I like to work from about 10am to 3pm. I'll need an hour for lunch. And I don't work when it's raining. I think it's a weird question to ask a prospective employer, but an important one. What are your company values? It's kinda like asking on a first date your date's life philosophy. But man, it becomes evident when a company has no values. And if you don't have anything to strive for other than a dollar, your employees won't last. Make sure you word this correctly too. They may have their values on their website, but really they don't practice what they preach. They can see this as that you really didn't research the company. I'm going to be using what did your company do for employees during COVID-19. That's a really great question. Reaching out to potential clients likely refers to cold calling frick that. I hate how modern speech is filled to the brim with doubler speak to sound cool. Pisses me off. I wish more crap just called a spade a spade. At one of my old jobs, my crappy boss was trying to give a potential client the pitch. He told him we had technology to track data. It was Bitly, the site where you can change the link of websites to make them prettier and keep track of clicks. What a damn tool. If you are expected to work right off without sufficient training, it reflects poorly on the company's management and likely also means that they don't care about the employees 